It's time to ignite your soul and unlock your full potential. Join us on Beneath the Helmet, the podcast exploring firefighters' health and wellness. Hosted by retired fire chief Arjuna George, our podcast is the perfect place to start your journey towards becoming the best version of yourself. So come on, let's join the conversation and find out what sets your soul on fire. All right, welcome back, everyone. This is a very special episode, episode number 50, episode 50 of Beneath the Helmet, bit of a milestone uh, I have a, a very unique opportunity today to actually get interviewed by a close friend of mine, a fellow podcaster, a fellow coach, and just an all around amazing human being. Today, I got a chance to sit down with podcaster and fellow coach, Cindy Thompson. Uh, so be sure to check out Cindy's podcast. She's interviewed me a couple of times, and it was an opportunity to share my story through resilience. She has an, a, a great podcast called A Resilience Project. I uh, highly recommend checking that out. Uh, she interviews people from all over the world, telling their stories about resilience. So just kind of finished my my first year of podcasting, uh, episode number 50, and I thought a great way to celebrate that would be to share a little bit about my journey going through podcasting. And uh, Cindy was kind enough to sit down with me for an hour and uh, kind of pick my brain on everything, podcasting, uh, my new business, uh, my life, everything like that. So I hope you get a glimpse into behind the scenes of what Beneath the Helmet's all about, a little bit about my mission, my passion, and uh, a little bit more about me as a person. So sit back, relax, enjoy episode number 50, celebrating just over a year of Beneath the Helmet uh, podcast show. Until next time. Stay well. Arjuna, thank you. I'm so glad that I get to be part of this conversation and celebrating your one year anniversary of Beneath the Helmet. I feel like this is an important journey that you've been on and part of your encore career, but continuing your meaningful work that you've always done in your career. And I'm just so pleased that I get to be part of this conversation. Yeah, it's uh, look, kind of looking back on the year. It's like, wow, that's a lot has transpired in the year. So I'm very grateful to have you uh, kind of take a sneak peek into the, the background of the last year. So I appreciate that. I'm excited. I feel like this is such a privilege. And to learn uh, what's been showing up for you along the way. Uh, before we jump into, you know, maybe what you've been discovering, can you share with us what inspired you to start the podcast Beneath the Helmet? Uh, can we start there? Because I'd love to hear where that spark started. Well, after 24 years in the fire service, um, I kind of hit a wall and had to make a very tough decision to retire from the fire service way before I was planning to. And in my whole process of um, kind of burnout recovery and finding out what's next uh, through coaching, I kind of had a clearer picture about what my future could look like. And I really didn't think I was going back to the fire service. I didn't think that uh, I was going to be the same kind of person that I used to be anyways. But really what sparked the podcast was the fact that I felt like I had such a rich connection in the fire service across the world. I had a pretty tight network where I was, you know, if you mention my name, Across Canada, most people are going to, in the fire service, are going to say, oh, I have heard of him, or I know him, or I've read something about him. And I really didn't want to lose that um, connection that I had built over those 24 years. And I was like, how can I still be a part of the fire service? How can I still contribute to the fire service? How can I still remain in the loop? And the only thing I thought of was writing, coaching, and podcasting. And podcasting, I really wanted to have a niche for the fire service. I truly felt that it, there was a lot of podcasts out there that were either about mental health or they're about physical health, or they're more about the operations of firefighting. I was struggling and, and there's quite a few out now, but I was struggling at first to find a very holistic podcast, one that covered all those bases. So leadership, self-development, mental health, physical health, wellness in general. And so I thought, well, if I can't find it, I'll make it. Um, so that was kind of the, the, the birth of Beneath the Helmet. 
And when I was thinking about the story itself of Beneath the Helmet, the name pretty much from day one has stuck with me. And the idea that kind of I see in my, my mind is everything beneath the helmet. So it's the mind, body, and spirit of being an elite firefighter. Uh, so everything that's encased underneath that helmet. And yeah, it's been, it's been a blast. And, and like I said, my, I didn't want to lose my connections that I'd kind of built over the years and, and the relationships that I'd built, but ironically they've 10 X, which is, which is amazing. Uh, so the amount of connections that I've built that were never there when I was the fire chief, uh, are now there. So yeah. that's, that's pretty special. Yeah. So for it to grow, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I get the impression that when you're in the fire service, it's like a brotherhood or a family or, you know, these people become the, the people that get you because you're going through that as first responders together, that you didn't want to stretch too far away from that because that's that you don't want to walk away from your family. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. And definitely it comes with guilt as well. So sometimes even when I was going through my burnout recovery, I felt guilty that I wasn't just going back to work, that I wasn't just kind of putting back that uniform and, and doing it all over again. Um, but the other side of me said, no, you don't, you deserve this rest. You deserve this, this opportunity. You did 24 years. That's nothing to, you know, to not be proud of. That's, you know, 24 years of service and Really, it felt more like 50 years of service because I put my heart and soul into it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I would definitely, I would agree with that for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hear you're caring for the people and right. wanting to honor what you've been developing and learning over the years, but also the learning that happened once you retired. I feel like there you learned so much about yourself personally that you could then share with others. Tell us about that. Yeah, you're bang on there. That's a great question. Cause I, I truly felt that I spent my whole life of service, um, in all my jobs that I've done. And I'm very proud of that. But on the, on the flip side, I also forgot about myself, uh, through that process. Uh, I talked about mental health in our fire department. I talked about wellness in our department, but I obviously was not paying a hundred percent attention to my own well being. So since retirement, that's been number one on my, my radar. Number one learning lesson that I pretty much take in every single day is know more about myself. And I've never been more authentic, more vulnerable, more understanding of what's going on inside my body and my mind. I just have so much more awareness about myself than I ever have before. And I owe that kind of to coaching to therapy, to having just the time, the space to think and kind of almost be with myself and kind of meditate on those, um, those feelings that maybe I hadn't felt in a long, long time. Right. So I'm a bit of an emotional stuffer. I've, I've never really expressed emotions. I like anger is one of my ones that I, I, I think is the most toxic one for me. In the, in the way that I, I really don't express anger. I, very few people ever see me angry. Very few people ever see me get frustrated or yell or scream. But all that anger, that very toxic, heavy emotion, this can be a very good emotion to have if used in the right way. But for me, I just bottled it up. And when I started to feel that frustration, it was scary, but also kind of liberating at the same time that I could actually feel that and process it more than, mm. more than I ever could for sure. Well, and there's so much there because I hear what you've been learning about yourself and at the same time, still wanting to help others. So what have you been learning about yourself since doing the podcast? Like this, I feel like this journey has just continued. Yeah, well, I think it, it's helped me own my listening skills. Um, I always feel like I've been a good listener and coaching is obviously 10 X that as well, but even podcasting, once again, you're just super, super laser focused into what they're saying while you're interviewing somebody. And sometimes it's so, I get so focused that it's kind of like I'm in tunnel vision. All I hear is just the person in front of me and nothing else. So 
Yeah, I think I've learned a lot about listening and being with people. Um, very similar to yourself. I, my presence is kind of my superpower. Um, I, I've been told this several times that just me sitting with somebody can make them feel vulnerable, open, honest with themselves and share stories that they've never told anyone in the world. And some of the podcast episodes I've had have been where people have said, well, I've never actually shared this, but I tried to end my life on this day. Um, I've never shared this with people, but such and such, such and such. So it, it's kind of like, wow, that's to be able to be a person who can sit in front of somebody on a zoom call across the world and make them feel safe enough to be vulnerable on screen and then share that with the world um, through a podcast platform, uh, mm -hmm. kind of fills my bucket for sure. Every time that happens. And I, I just enjoy, like it fills my bucket once again. And he, uh, yeah, there's the cup, but I have a bucket that I used, like to fill. Okay. <laughs> so my bucket, it, you know, having conversations with people that are more meaningful than, you know, little side coffee chats around the, the water cooler. Uh, I'm not a big person on small chat. Um, you know, I, I kind of have a challenge with having just small little conversations that don't mean much, but when you get into an, an hour long, deep conversation. That's a game changer and that, that fulfills my life as well as hopefully allowing them to, you know, share their story fulfills their life as well, or, or what they want to share with the world. And then there's lots of things that I've, have learned about, uh, patients scheduling, um, the whole editing nightmare of podcasting is you gotta be a, a black belt in patience, uh, for editing. <laughs> Cause that's a, a grueling task. Um, but I've streamlined a lot of that. So that's kind of helped me because I really, I know that the podcasting and coaching, both the two kind of worlds that I'm in right now are very high burnout, um, hobbies or occupations. So I'm very, very careful that I don't burn out. Um, I'm sure I'm going to go through peaks and valleys of feeling burnt out. But I, I feel like I have the tools now to kind of identify that a little faster. And I, I want to make podcasting, coaching, everything. I want to make that sustainable for years to come. And I think that's only possible by balance. Like, honestly, I, I, I right now I keep to my podcast episodes every two weeks. Uh, I would love to do weekly and maybe one day I'll get there. But for me, weekly would put me into burnout, I think. That would put too much pressure on myself to get an episode out of every week. The quality may be good, might be lower quality, but the pressure alone of doing that every week, um, I'm not quite there yet. The pressure's there for every two weeks already. So I think, uh, condensing that would be, uh, an interesting scenario to go through. So I feel very kind of ready for everything I'm doing. And I feel like I have the tools to now flourish in that versus, um, you know, podcasting is one of those things that many people don't get past episode 12, I think it is, or something like that. So I feel kind of blessed that I've almost tripled that now and, and still feel like I, I got a massive list of guests that want to be on the show, uh, almost too long because I feel bad for some of the guests that are being waiting for months and months to have their episode on the air. That's a great testimony. It is it, for sure. hundred percent. It makes me feel good. But on the flip side, it makes me feel bad that they have to wait for that story to be released to the world. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when I hear you speak about leaving the fire service, uh, in its traditional sense and that long career you had there, uh, it makes me think about so many of my guests, um, have spoken about how they don't regret going through that adversity that they experienced in order to get to the other side and learn what they did about themselves and to maybe hit reset and do, do it very differently than they were living. And so I'm curious if you've looked back on that season, not that we want anybody to go through burnout in the way that you did, but I wonder if you reflect on that season as almost a gift or a blessing. I'm curious how you see that now. Oh, 100% a gift. 
hundred percent a gift. Uh, I, it was, there was dark days, there was challenges, there was a lot of stress and, and, and probably physical damage to my body, honestly, through, you know, I still have high cortisol levels. I still have, you know, a lot of things that are out of whack in my body. They're starting to balance, but my body took a beating through burnout, which some might think it's not really a, a physical thing, but your body definitely goes through some changes when you're going through extreme burnout. But through all that, through the dark days, through the changes in, you know, my health, wouldn't give, I wouldn't change it, wouldn't trade it, wouldn't, uh, there's just zero, zero, um, negative thoughts about it. It's a hundred percent a gift because I wouldn't be what I'm doing right now if I did not go through that process. I wouldn't have the skill set of going through burnout, managing through it and having the story to tell after it of how to, you know, how to maneuver, how to navigate yourself through burnout. I think going through burnout is different for everyone, but there is some key tools that people can use that pretty much would work universal, um, for burnout recovery. So now I have the chance to share that. And once again, that fills me up. It gives me purpose that I am able to maybe help somebody else get out of burnout or hopefully more than that is to prevent burnout from happening more often than it does. Um, yeah, so I, I truly see it as a gift. I even developed one of my key workshop, uh, presentations is called the seven gifts of burnout. Yeah. And it's my seven gifts that I got from burnout that I want to share with the world. Um, it's powerful to me because it's, it kind of reinforces that it's a gift versus, you know, a detriment or I was cursed or something like that. It was, I was truly, I was meant to go through that, I think. Mm, like a wake up call. Right. And. I'm curious, you know, if you could go back and say something to that guy who was hanging on by his fingernails, maybe uh, feeling committed, because I can hear the loyalty you felt to the fire service, the commitment to the people you were working with, your colleagues, and you wouldn't have been there if it wasn't meaningful to you. But at the same time, I can hear some insight and wisdom as to what you might have been feeling and not willing to let go of. So what would you say to that guy now in hindsight? Hmm. Several things I would say, listen to your body because your body is very wise. It tells you a lot of things that we ignore. I think if I listened to my body, I would have maybe taken a break and it wouldn't have been a, a career ending break. It would have been a couple of weeks or a month or whatever that looks like. It would have been a break and I would maybe be back in the fire service again. Um, so that's definitely one is listen to the body. The body's got tons of wisdom that we need to pay attention to. And honestly, I, I think going to counseling, getting a coach earlier would have been very beneficial. Um, I think both of those, I had a therapist, well, I have several therapists that I kind of use in different areas, but I didn't see them on a regular basis. I used them when 911, when there is an emergency and now I use it as maintenance. Uh, so I really want to, that's what I would tell myself is, you know, make that phone call, call your therapist, get an appointment, maybe not going through crazy turbulent times right now, but let's prepare yourself for that time. Mm. And then coaching, I think coaching would have helped me because it really, what burnt me out, there's a lot of factors that burnt me out, but one of the key ones was I felt like a lone soldier at the fire station because I was the only manager of 60 people. I felt very isolated, you know, the cliche about feel lonely at the top. Yeah. But when you're so by yourself, like you have nobody to talk to, like I, I have, you know, confidants and, and colleagues at the fire station that were either in the union or as a volunteer and I could chat with them, but there's certain things I just, I had to keep at a certain level. And that was very challenging because I think I was making decisions in a bubble and that put a lot of stress and pressure on me to make those decisions in a bubble. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were life and death situations or very big financial or political decisions. And 
making that in isolation is very challenging and puts a lot of pressure on, on yourself for sure. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't have to, right? Like I think about radical interdependence and reaching out and not having to carry that load on your own and mm -hmm. knowing that there are options out there that you know of now, but there was something in you that felt like you had to handle it alone. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was kind of my, I guess the negative side of how I was talking to myself, um, was that this is your job. This is your role. You're supposed to work here 24 seven. You're supposed to be at every event as a fire chief. They're looking at you to be at every call. You know, I just put a lot of expectations on myself. Maybe the public had the same expectations. Maybe the fire service did. Maybe my board of trustees did, but I'm not sure, but I definitely know I did hundred percent. And that's, that's a lot of weight to carry for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I feel like it's so cool that you get to now help in a different kind of way in a broader community. Like you were making a difference in your community on Salt Spring Island and your team and those 60 people that were direct reports perhaps. But I feel like stepping away has given you this broader opportunity through your writing, through the podcast, as you said, to reach more people and help in a different kind of way, but still look after your, your family in a way, the family of fire service uh, providers, first responders, and uh, to, to build them up and, and support them in a new way now. Yeah, I, definitely the, you know, the local family, I guess you could say of the fire service is, you know, near and dear to my heart. I, I love those firefighters um, more than anything, but yeah, like you mentioned, the, the, ex, the extension of that family has now gone across North America and actually even to Australia and UK, which I had connections with, but now I actually have brothers and sisters in those countries. Right. So yeah, hundred percent. Um, sorry, I forgot where we were there. Okay. Well, I was just honoring, it wasn't really a question. Yes. I was just kind of yeah. honoring that you're now able to help in a new way that yes, you maybe yeah, couldn't right. have imagined there that it's you just keep kind of building into it staying true to your mission and your vision for helping maybe prevent other people from going through burnout like you did and for bringing in guests who can speak on different elements of it not just yourself but but others and share their stories as well would that be fair yeah i think the podcast really is born around an interview style um, I, I do plan to do a bit more solo episodes just for people to get a little bit more of an insight into what I do and how I show up, but I love the fact that I can make a, I call it curating, curating stories for people where I can provide a space, a platform for people to share their experience and not about war stories or, you know, just negative, negative. I want people to come on the show who want to tell their story provide tools and a way out of the suffering or the challenges that they were facing and not just war stories. Um, I want people to walk away with some tools, some techniques, some ideas, some concepts that will make them thrive in life. That's my goal for sure. Mm -hmm. So I hope to do that with myself as well as, uh, having guests on the show, which is, I love having guests on the show, a hundred percent. And it's really opens my eyes up to their experiences as well. The amount of stuff that I learn after every episode is, is amazing. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, they always got, there's always a couple of nuggets in there for them to share with me. They're like, oh, I never knew that. Or that's interesting to see in that different light or different perspective. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Oh, that's cool. I love that. Well, and on that note, I'm curious, you know, you've now met several people all over that are now following you and reading your book and listening to your podcast. What is one thing about Arjuna that might surprise people that they don't know? Uh -huh. Nice one. Good question. Um, I want a nugget. I want a gem that is going to surprise people. <laughs> I, well, in my book, I pretty much told all my dirty secrets. So <laughs> come on, there's got to be something. Let me think here for a second. Well, I guess, uh, one that I, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I said this or not, but I'm, I'm sure people have seen this because part of burnout was the anxiety that I developed never in my life 
up until maybe the last five years in the fire service, did I feel anxiety. It was like, it was a totally foreign feeling to me. And that's still with me today. Like it's, I have tools to, to control it a bit better. I have tools to, to manage it. But really what I'm seeing is that I might look very, very confident on the outside, but inside I'm stressed. Mm. Um, not all the time. Yeah. But when I'm performing, when I say performing, I mean going on stage and doing a, a workshop or doing a keynote or even a podcast kind of elevates that, you know, I, I track my, all my, you know, body bio, biodynamics okay. on my ring that I have a, this aura oh. ring. Oh, interesting. And you, and you can see when you're doing an episode, your, your blood pressure goes up or your pulse rate goes up or, um, not as much doing podcasting. And I kind of feel like I, I want to do more of the keynotes, but on the flip side, I know that's also an area that doesn't fill my bucket up as much. I prefer workshop style where I build a relationship with the people versus going there for an hour speaking and then leaving. Mm. I just, it fills my bucket and it kind of feels, um, I just feel like I give more value to them in, you know, four hours, eight hours versus a one hour speech. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's probably something pr probably people think that I, I enjoy that. Um, and I do it because I want to share the message. I want to share my story, but it's not really something I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that, like, could, that could bite me in the butt one day, but. Well, and that's, that's good that you're honest with yourself and, and you're at a point in your career where you can do more of what you love. And there might be some building blocks that you're willing to do some of that, but maybe not all the time. So I can hear you kind of checking in on how much of that you feel you are, are, have capacity for. And meanwhile, you're at a stage in your career where you can just do all those things that you love the best. Because I know you love totally. to write as well, right? So yeah, 100%. Um, having time for that too. Yeah. So um, maybe one final question I have, Arjuna, is if you could have one guest, any guest, on your podcast, who would you like to have on that maybe feels out of your reach or maybe it seems like you're dreaming big, but who is somebody you would love to have on? David Marquette. Tell me uh, more. David Marquette, never met him, but I followed his, his work online. I've read all his books and his, his heart-led, human-led leadership style is coming, something that really resonates with me. And he did it in a fact of, in a submarine in the U.S. Army or U.S. Navy, I guess it would be. So kind of similar to the fire service where he was kind of the, the lone ranger bringing human leadership into the military, uh, very, very different atmosphere. And I kind of really resonated with that. And that's probably, I don't know, a good 10 years old, that book. And it still resonates to this day, how much value I got out of that one book, um, and watching his podcasts and his TED talks and stuff like that. But yeah, I'd love to have him on the show, pick his brain because everything that he stands for and what he did really resonates deeply with me for sure. Mm. Will you call me and let me know if I miss that episode when you get him on? I, I'll tell the world when I get okay. him on. I'll celebrate with you. <laughs> love that. Well, uh, Arjuna, I am so excited that you are going to continue to do this work in all capacities, your writing, your speaking, your workshops. But this podcast has a special way of reaching people all over the world. And what a privilege for them to be able to hear and learn from you and from your guests. And I hope that you'll continue to do it as long as it still fills that bucket for you. So I wish you the best. Thank you for letting me be part of this one year anniversary. And it feels like a privilege to be able to share this moment with you. Oh, I couldn't, uh, yeah, it's hard to b believe that it's been a year. It's, uh, yeah, time flies, but wow. What a, what a way to celebrate it with you today. That was very special. So thank you. Mm, my honor. Thank you for letting me be part of it. Thank you, awesome. Arjuna. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That's a wrap, my friend. 
Thank you for tuning in to Beneath the Helmet. We hope that this podcast has provided you with valuable insights into the world of firefighters' health and wellness. Remember, caring for your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being is crucial to achieving optimal performance. Join us next time on Beneath the Helmet for more inspiring conversations. Until then, stay well.